Many people start their day with different things on their mind, like what to wear, check their social media, work, and how much money they can make. Not putting God first and suddenly, in a moment, they will die and the people will be troubled at midnight and pass away and the mighty will be taken away without a hand. This is why you need the midnight prayer. Hi there. May the Spirit of God bless you. Now it's midnight and in three minutes. We are preparing ourselves for the moment of prayer. But before, let me show to you now this powerful testimony. And please get yourself ready. Prepare a glass of water. Because when I come back here, I am going to pray for you and also for Trinidad and Tobago. My name is Elizabeth. I used to go out party with my friends. I used to drink a lot and I would come home really late. I pretty much didn't care about my life. And after I had my second child, I started suffering with depression and anxiety. And as the time passed, the depression got worse and I started having panic attacks. So if I was like, around surrounded with a lot of people I started having symptoms of like I couldn't breathe or I would start breathing faster and then I felt like I was gonna faint so when I would start having those symptoms I would take um, pills because the doctors had me under medication I would take depression pills and I would have to take the, the pills for the panic attacks. As soon as I would take the pills, then I would calm down. So that was the only thing that would calm me down. I would, I would just be on pills all day, and that was the only thing that would ease my mind, make me calm, and then it would make me sleepy. So basically I was drugged the whole day. I was going to like the psych psychologist once a week, then as it got worse, they had to see me twice a week because they would think that, you know, I could commit suicide because of all the thoughts that were coming to my head. Like I would have thoughts of killing my kids. I would have thoughts of stabbing myself. I would hear voices telling me to stab myself. I would hear voices telling me to kill my kids. So I would say that to the psychologist. So they would want to see me more because they feared that, you know, I would take my life or my kid's life. I ended up in a mental institution. I remember saying, like praying to God, God, you know, I'm not crazy, help me. I was, I asked for his help there. I was like, I can't live my life like this. Cause I was there and my kids, you know, they were at home. I would think about them, like who's taking care of them? What are they doing? I couldn't care for them. I couldn't because I was not okay. I was not okay. I, I was going through a lot. So after that, um, they gave me more medication um, and I went home, but I was still depressed. I was still suffering. I didn't want to take a shower. I didn't want to come out of my room. And that's when I met a friend, a co-worker, and she was inviting me to come to the church. But I always like didn't want to accept her invitation. Like I always told her, yes, I will go, but never ended up coming. But when all that happened to me, I went to go look for her and I asked her, you know, please take me to this church because I, I can't anymore. Like I, I went crying to her and we came, we came to the church um, and the pastor that was there prayed for me. After the prayer, I felt much, much better. And after that, I started coming to church more. I started doing my chain of prayers. I started doing, I started understanding more how to use my faith. And I got delivered from the depression. I took the decision of not, you know, taking the pills anymore. I didn't have the desire anymore, like to go to parties, to be with my friends. I started having the desire to know who that God was, the God that the pastor will preach about. I wanted to have that encounter with God. That desire grew 
bigger and bigger inside of me. So in one of the purposes that I did with God, I had that encounter with God. And I was baptized with the Holy Spirit that night, that night vigil. And ever since that day, my life has never been the same. Battles, yes, I, I do have battles, but I am able to face them because God is with me. He gives me the strength to, to face all my problems that I have. And now I know what happiness really is. Because when God is inside of us, like we have the real happiness inside. I'm not just happy like when I'm around people that I like or, you know, around friends. I'm, I'm happy. Just take the first step and you'll see that God's going to be there to help you and take you off from the depression or whatever you're going through. Prayer is our communication with God. You watched the testimonies. You heard the word. But now, please close your eyes and prepare for the moment of prayer. In life we have so much pain. Our Lord and our Father, in the name of your Son, Jesus, Lord. What we saw in the life of this lady through her testimony, we do believe, Lord, that the same thing can take place in the life of this person who is praying together with me. This person, Lord, that don't know what else to do to have a better family. What else to do? This person don't know what else to do to save the marriage. Because the husband, he changed his mind. He left the house. Maybe with another lady, with another woman. This person, Lord, that in this exact moment feels hopeless. Because she doesn't know. It seems like that all the strength of her body are gone. And now, my Lord, she feel like that she cannot do anything else. Oh, my God, I call upon you. I call upon your name. You are capable, my God, to help this person, to save her marriage, to bless her family. You have the power, my God, to break this curse and bring a total transformation to this person's life. You have the power, my God, to set this person free from cancer, from HIV. You have the power now to enter the hospital and touch the body of this person who is breathing by the machine. This person that the doctors already said that he cannot do anything. You have the power, my Lord, to bring health to this person. You have the power, my Lord, to make the impossible to become impossible. And that's why we call upon your name now, Lord. Set this person free. Bring salvation to the family of this person. Bring joy, bring peace, bring restoration. Oh, my Lord, like in the days of Noah, when he obeyed your voice and he could be able to see, Lord, all his family being saved, the same thing we want for those who are praying together with me. This lady who lost her husband, who lost a family member, this person who carries and carries inside of them this unbearable pain, this spirit of depression, this anxiety, this sadness. Please, Lord, set this person free. Anoint and consecrate our water for when we drink, Lord. Whatever that's not good for us may be removed by your power. I also pray on behalf of Trinidad and Tobago. My God, stop with the crime. Stop with the violence. Stop, my Lord, with the corruption. So many things take place here in our land. Set Trinidad and Tobago free. Heals our land, Lord, from all the works of the devil. My God, bless the authorities of this nation. In order for them to provide the best. Please, Lord, take control. 
take control of our country and bless all the Trinidadians and Tobagones. And my Lord, even those who are from other countries, bless them, Father. Answer our prayer. This is exactly what I ask you. I also, my Lord, ask you for you to protect our children. All the children, Father of Trinidad and Tobago, we are preparing ourselves to pray for them this coming Friday. And I do believe, Lord, that they are going to be anointed and protected. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, and those who believe, says Amen. Do you believe, friend? Drink now from your water and be blessed. Amen. I do believe that God, He heard our prayer. And right there where you are, receive life. Okay? Today, all the universal churches, we are going to have the great challenge of the cross. At 6 o'clock, as you can see the picture, at 6 o'clock, 10, 12 noon, free, most especially at 5 p.m. The last service, it's going to be half past 6. When you come, do not forget to bring a new bar of soap. In the opportunity, we are going to be blessing all the children. Yes, all the children, you that you have a child that will go back to school, or perhaps the school is open already for your child, you are going to bring your children to be anointed. You also can bring the, the stationery, you can bring the bag. We are going to anoint them, we are going to anoint everything, and we are going to give it to your child the seal of protection you are going to watch now and you will find out more about it okay friend may the spirit of god bless you see you friday with the great challenge of the cross seal and protection for all students Bring your children to receive this seal to stick on the books, laptop, as well the pastor will anoint the stationaries. This Friday. Number 40 South Key Port of Spain or any other universal church near you. You see your children excel and see a brighter future.